Hey squirrel monkeys, in this video I'm going to break down some ratio problems that uh, seem pretty challenging at first uh, read through, but once you find a strategy to do it, you can realize they're not going to be uh, very difficult problems. Uh, the tough part is just figuring out um, your first step or your first strategy. This first problem is a good example of that. A bag is filled with pennies, nickels, and dimes. There are 150% as many nickels as pennies in the bag, and there are 200% as many dimes as pennies. Um, if the total number of coins is 1,620, how many pennies are in the bag? Well, let's just break this problem down. I'm going to use a table to attack it because when I'm not sure where to go, a table is always uh, a really good strategy. So I'm going to put my parts in first. I always like to start... Uh, when you're making a table, you always want to start with the smallest value and then grow from there in, in whatever logical order that it's giving you. Um, in this case, clearly, the smallest value is pennies. So I'm going to put my pennies in. And then I'm going to make in the next column, I'm going to make my nickels. And I'm going to put a little label here for me to continue to reference that the nickels are 150% the pennies. In the last column, I'm going to put my dimes. And my label for dimes is going to be 200% uh, as many dimes as pennies. So whatever the pennies are, the dimes are 200% of the pennies. I'm going to add one column in here because it also tells me that the total number of coins is 1,620. So I'm going to write total. And I'll put a label up here that says 1,620. That's what I know the total needs to be. Let me represent this information. If you're not sure where to begin to attack a problem like this, um, and you might not have as much background knowledge with percents to give you an idea, just put something in. We know pennies is the smallest value. Let's just say I say I make pennies be uh, 1. What we're doing right now is we're finding out the ratio. Uh, we know percent works in ratio. So if pennies was 1, nickels would be 100% of that. If you're not sure how to figure that out, I'll, I'll give you an example on the side. All right, in the orange. Percent and uh, number. 100% of the pennies would be 1. So we need to get 50% more. We could go to 150%, but I'm just going to go from 100% to 50% by dividing by 2. 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. So in this scenario, there would be um, 1.5 nickels. Um, and we know that's not possible, but that's okay. I, I, we can leave that on our table right now. There would be 200% uh, the number of dimes is penny. So if I go back to this table, if 100% would be 1, then 200% would be 2. In this scenario right now, um, there would be 2, 3, 4.5 would be my total. Um, if you're not comfortable working in these um, with a decimal, you could kind of double everything and you could make the pennies two, um, the nickels in that case would be three, and the dimes would be four. So we have our ratio now. Our ratio is one to 1.5 to two, or two to three to four, um, or whatever else you want to make it. The next step is just going straight. Now, in this ratio, we know that the total is also 1,620. So the question is, what do I need to multiply 4.5 by to get to 1,620? Now, once again, for the purposes of the video and not taking up too much time, I'm just going to do it on the calculator. 1,620 divided by 4.5, 360, which means... I'm multiplying everything by 360. 
Once again, the problem asks how many pennies are there. So you can take the pennies straight here, multiply by 360. And so the answer would be there are 360 pennies. There's one other thing I want to show you about this table that you probably didn't catch at the beginning. I'm just going to erase all this information right now. We found out the answer was 360. I want to show you something very nice about percents. If instead of calling the pennies 1, like we started with, if we call the pennies 100, think about it like a meter stick. The pennies would be 100, or if you're looking at a meter stick, it's like 100 centimeters. If I said, what's 150% of that, it would be 150. If I said, what's 200% of 100, well, it would be 200. And that would be a really simple way to set this type of problem up. Uh, it would require very little thinking. You would find out that the total is uh, 450. And just like before, when we went from 4.5 to 1620 by multiplying by 360, um, in this case, to go from 450, now we're just essentially multiplying by um, 3.6 to get there. And um, 100 times 3.6 is 36. So that's another way you could have done this type of a problem. I'm going to go to the next problem, which at first glance seems like a very difficult problem once again. And we're going to think, need to think of a way to make sense of all this information. Um, once again, remember, when we set up our tables, we want to start with the smallest value. It's a complicated problem. There are three times as many cars as trucks in the parking lot. Let's just stop for a second and make sense of that relationship. You hear multiplication there, three times as many cars as trucks. Well, that's a ratio. There are three times as many cars as trucks. It's in a ratio of three to one. So I'm just going to jot this information down. Cars to trucks is a ratio of three to one. We know that um, because there are three times as many cars. So I'm just going to make a little note here of how this all relates to ratio. The number of motorcycles is twice the number of bikes. So I'm just going to add something over here. If I add motorcycles to bikes, the number of motorcycles is twice the number of bikes. But it gives me one other piece of information. It also says there are four times as many trucks as bikes. That changes everything about this setup. So right now, we can't say it's in a 3 to 1 to 2 to 1 ratio because the ratio between trucks and bikes, there needs to be, um, this needs to be 4 to 1. There are four times as many trucks as bikes. If the total number of vehicles is 285, how many cars are there? Well, if you're attacking the problem like this, it's a very tricky problem. So let's represent this information in our table and go back to what I keep saying about when you use a table, start with the smallest value. Right now it should be clear to us that bikes are the smallest value. So I'm going to start my table and I'm going to put bikes. And this is kind of my beginning point right here. This is where we begin. From bikes, we start moving out. Um, we look at what bikes is in a ratio to. Bikes is in a ratio to uh, motorcycles, it says. And I could write um, motorcycles is twice as many as bikes. So I'm just going to write myself a little note here, two times bikes. Or I could say motorcycles to bikes is a two to one ratio. After this, now I'm going to put in my trucks because bikes has a relationship to trucks too. And, and, and trucks needs to be four times as many bikes. Or a four to one ratio. Our last column, we need to put in our cars. And I'm going to put a little label for cars too because cars is three times my trucks. So I'm going to put a trucks times three. Or cars to trucks is a 3 to 1 ratio. 
which I mapped out at the beginning. And then we also have something about our vehicles, which would be our total. And this is our target. Our target is 285. We're going to do a lot of other problems like this, um, but even more complicated. Right now, we're just setting out the ratio. Um, I don't know what to begin with with bikes. Let's just make the bikes one. Motorcycles to bikes is a two to one ratio. There are two times as many motorcycles as bikes. Trucks to bikes are a four to one ratio. There are four times as many trucks as bikes. And cars to trucks are in a three to one ratio. So there are three times as many cars as trucks. So if there are four trucks, there would be 12 so that we can keep that ratio consistent, um, which would make our total in this current ratio Setting this all out in ratio from bikes to motorcycles to trucks to cars, we have a ratio of 1 to 2 to 4 to 12. That would make the total 12 plus 4 is 16, 18, 19. So in a 1 to 2 to 4 to 12 ratio, we have a total of 19. The actual total, the target, 285. So we need to think about, and I'm just going to pull out the calculator here so you don't know, need to... Spend the time watching me divide. I'm thinking, what do I have to multiply 19 by to get to 285? So I'm going to 285 divided by 19. That equals 15. So I'm multiplying by 15. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the rest. Um, question is, how many cars are there? So I'm not going to spend the time doing everything to the rest. I'm just going to do 12 times 15. Uh, 15 times 10 is 150, so we're going to say it's 180. That would be two more 15s. There are 180 cars. This is a good problem. This is when it starts getting more into that seven-star territory. You have to figure out how to map and organize the information in ratio. Um, and uh, a table is a good way to set this type of thing up.